Hey, I'm Matt, and I'm going to be teaching you how to build a butterfly clicker game. Yes, just like the famous cookie clicker game, you click on butterflies to earn points. Let's get started. We are building a brand new game, so you need to find the Create button at the top of the Scratch homepage. This is the page you'll see when you start building a new game. First, you'll notice they give you a cat sprite. What's a sprite? It's the same thing as a character or an image in your video game. Now, I don't need a cat sprite in this game, so I'm going to delete that sprite. You can't delete the sprite on the stage. You have to come down to the sprite menu and click the trash can button. There. Now, to add a new sprite, I'll hover over the cat head and I'll click it to choose a sprite from the library. Feel free to choose whichever sprite you'd like, but I'm going to choose a butterfly. Now to start your game in Scratch, you'll click the green flag at the top, but you'll notice nothing happens. You'll need to provide detailed instructions to all of the sprites in your game. But we don't call them instructions. We call that programming. And we program it by adding code blocks to the code area. Let's practice adding some coding blocks to our game. So we can just drag and drop and click them together. And if we don't want them, we can just disconnect them and throw them back in the pile. Let's throw them all back. Let's dive right in and code our butterfly clicker game. The first block we need is an event block called when the green flag is clicked. So here we go. We'll drag that in. Now we want the butterfly to go to the center of the page. That way, when they finish playing, wherever the butterfly is, it will snap to the center. So that's a motion block. Now there isn't a go to center block, but there is a go to x, y block. And we can replace the x value with zero and the y value with zero, and that will be exactly in the center. Now let's test it. Yep, it worked. Now that we have a starting script, well, you notice I use that word script. Anytime you have an event and coding blocks grouped together, we call that a script. Let's add another event. This one will say when the sprite is clicked, we'll have it go to a random position. In the motion blocks, there is a go to random position block. So when I start the game, now when I click the sprite, it goes to a random position. Now this is where you can get a little bit creative because you can go into the looks menu and you can actually have it change costumes. What do I mean? Well, if you go in the costumes tab, you'll notice that this butterfly has different costumes. I'll go back to the code tab and you'll also notice that I can change size. I can change color. There are all sorts of different coding blocks that I can add to make my game more interesting. And of course, I can add a sound. So I can say play sound pop. What if I don't want it to pop? Can I choose different sounds? Yes, I can record my own sound, or I can go into the Sounds tab and add additional sounds available for this sprite. Now, you might have noticed I've added a bug to my code. What, what's a bug? Well, it's an unexpected behavior. See, when my butterfly gets bigger every time I click on it, that's great. But when I restart the game, the butterfly is still huge. I'll need to reset the butterfly's size in this starting script right here. So I'll go to looks and I'll say set size to 100%. Now this code will always run when the game starts. So when I click the green flag, now the butterfly is small again. Now, so far this game is absolutely pointless. Did you get that one? Pointless. So let's add some points. Now, points are a value that can change in the game. Anything that can change is called a variable. So click on the variables selector and click make a variable. Now you can actually name it anything you'd like, but I'm going to call my variable points. Once you've clicked OK, you'll notice that the value points or the variable points is now available. When you click on it, you'll see its value, which it starts at zero. You'll also see the value over here where it says points. Now I can make the points increase by changing them right here where it says change my variable. I'll say when the sprite is clicked, change, and there's a drop down points by one. Now when I click on my butterfly, the points will increase in value by one. Our game is no longer pointless, but it still doesn't have a goal. Games need to have a goal or a reason for playing them. In our game, 
we want the player to click the butterflies as many times as possible. We can do this by adding an alert that offers encouragement, like, congratulations, you've clicked the butterfly five times. Let's do that by adding another sprite, but this time we will paint the sprite because we want to write text. See the text tool right here? We can write the words like congratulations or great job. Uh, let's say five points. I can select it and make it larger. I can change the color there. Then I can position it on the game where I want it to show up. Now that I'm done drawing that sprite, I can switch out of the costumes tab into the code blocks tab and you'll notice there's no code. What happened to the code I wrote? Well, that code is still there. It's just in the butterflies coding area. This sprite, the great job sprite, doesn't have any coding blocks. So just like before, I'll add an event that says when the game starts, and the first thing I'll do is I'll say hide. Why? Because I don't want to see great job five points at the beginning. So when I start the game, it's gone. Now in order to show it, I'll need the show block. No duh. Okay, so when do I want to show this sprite? Well, I want to wait until the points equal five. Okay, so let's look for those coding blocks. I said wait until. That's in the control menu. I'll scroll down until I see, okay, wait until. That's kind of like a stop sign. It's going to wait until something happens before it shows. So wait until points. So I'll go in variables and I'll grab the value for points. Now I can't put the value points in there. I actually need to go and grab the operators because I said points equal something. So points equal five. Then I'll put that inside of the wait until block. There. Now, once the, wait a minute, the points are already above five. So this code won't work. Okay, so hold on, that's a bug. I'll need to fix it. So I'll need to go into variables and at the top of this code block, I'll say set points to zero. What that will do is reset the points at the beginning of the game. Now, when I reach five points, that message will show up. Now, do I want the message to stay there? Because now I'm already at 10. No, I want it to disappear. When? Well, maybe after two seconds. That sounds good. We can do that in the control blocks as well. We have a wait block. Let's say wait two seconds and then go back to looks and then hide. All right, that's a long script, isn't it? Go ahead and try that and see if it works in your game. Now we have this message that alerts the player after five points, but we wanna add another alert that triggers at 10 points or 20 points, and that's easy to do. All we have to do is duplicate this sprite. But before we do that, let's name the sprite because right now it's known as sprite one, and that might get confusing. So I'm gonna call this one alert five because it's gonna alert after five points. Now that it's named, I can right click on the sprite and click duplicate. This time I'm gonna name it alert 10. And I'm gonna go into the costumes for that sprite and I'm gonna change everything I need to change in order for it to be a 10 point message instead of the five point message. And I'm going to change the color as well so it's a little bit different. There, now we have two different messages, uh, but they have the same exact code because when you duplicate a sprite, it also duplicates the code. So I'll just go into the code and I'll change it. So I'll wait until points equal 10 and then it will show itself. So let's see if the game works now. When it gets to five, it should show great job five points. And then when it gets to 10, Great job, 10 points. And we can continue duplicating and changing the code to encourage the player. Now that we have our basic game working, we need to look for ways to improve the game. Well, immediately I'm looking at this game and it's just a boring white backdrop. So let's go to the stage menu and let's click this drop down to choose a backdrop. I'm going to say this game takes place in the Arctic. That's kind of funny. I don't know about you, but when I play a game and I don't hear sound effects and background music, I think boring. So let's add some sounds. The butterfly does, it plays the sound pop. 
The Alert 5 doesn't have a sound effect. So let's go in the sound menu and let's say start sound. Now, where do we want it to play? Right after they received five points, then we play the sound. Pop, that's the same thing the butterfly makes. So let's either record something or let's go to the sound tab and let's choose a sound. In this case, we want an effect sound. I'm gonna scroll down to where the win is. All right, that sounds cool. So I select win. Now I'll go back into the code and I'll use the drop down to select win. Now, just because I chose the win sound for this sprite doesn't mean it's available on the next sprite. See, it's missing from this one. So I'll need to do the exact same thing right here. And now you should have a working game with sound effects. Congratulations, you finished the basic butterfly clicker. Now it's up to you to make improvements, to make it more original, more unique to your personality. Maybe you'll be sillier, maybe you'll be funnier, scarier. I don't know. Try it on your friends, your family, your teacher. Get ideas and make this game spectacular. I can't wait to play your clicker game.